Welcome to the Weight Free Wellness Podcast, episode number four. The Weight Free Wellness Podcast, helping you through the ups and downs of weight, self image, and health, sharing resources, interviews with experts, and inspirational personal stories. And today you get all three with our guest, Victoria, the creator of Vika's Essentials, which is a USDA certified organic skincare line. And she shares how she overcame acne and eczema to having glowing skin naturally. She shares how glowing skin is the result of healthy lifestyle and pure, safe skincare. We have a lot to talk about in this podcast, so enjoy. Oh, and one more thing. Victoria is offering a great discount to you. Get 15% off a $50 minimum order using the code WAITFREE15. That's a great deal on products that are already a great price. Check it out. And we are live. So Victoria, we managed to hook up our uh, Hangouts, Google Hangouts here, and I'm pretty proud of us <laughs> because yep. I've had this number calls with my husband, um, but we did it, and I'm pretty pretty excited. Yeah, me too. We managed the technical part, so here now we get to do the fun part, which is talking about health and wellness and skincare. Uh, you several years ago started your own skincare line. And I met you a couple years ago at our local co-op and uh, started on some of the products and have really enjoyed them, especially in the summer here. My favorite, the Prodigal Sun. There's, and I don't know if it's, was it the almond oil or what is it that you think that I'm smelling that I just love the light scent to it? The scent is always combination of uh, oils which are in. Uh, it is tamanu nut oil. It is uh, chamomile, uh, it's carrot seed oil, which brings the, uh, all these aromas, and the, definitely sea buckthorn. Mm. So a couple of them on, <laughs> excuse me. Oh, I'm sorry, I jumped in too. And the sea buckthorn, now I'm getting ahead of myself, I have to finish introducing you. <laughs> so you have a very, very lovely natural skincare line, and not just natural, but organic, very high quality, um, process uh, like cool processing the oils so very uh, very high standards for for your skincare line Thank and you. I've really enjoyed what what I have used and we'll get into more of the details um, of well maybe we should start there of what inspired you to create this line because my husband and I are business owners and well as well and it's not a small feat to start your own business and launch a product. So what was your uh, inspiration, you could say, to start in your own skincare line? <laughs> well, I would say that my inspiration was born out of desperation, I would say. <laughs> um, because since uh, I was a teenager, I've been suffering with a very poor skin conditions. So I had a lot of acne, so that rashes uh, and uh, that bothers me over more than 25 years about nine years ago when i turned 50 um, things became so bad but it turns right the opposite direction i started to get get dry patches which were very flaky itchy and uh, red so uh, i was all covered with those patches which totally drove me crazy. I didn't know how to get rid of them, so nothing worked. So dermatologist told me that it's uh, dermatitis uh, slash eczema, so, and prescribed me steroid cream, which is absolutely wasn't acceptable for me since I'm kind of uh, focused on natural um, products. And uh, then I decided to do my own research uh, Took me a while to learn how skin works, and uh, a while to find out how the body works, because skin only reflects what's going on inside. So what we eat, what we think, even what we do, so everything reflects on our skin. If you're going a lot in a lot of stresses, that's going to affect us. If we eat junk food going to affect the skin also. So I'm going to have to back up a step. Are you saying that you're 59 years old? 58 to be more 58. accurate. 
<laughs> yes. You look amazing. I mean, you are naturally very beautiful, but you can tell that you've taken care of your skin, especially. Thank you. Testimonies to what you're talking about. So you're yeah. saying that the, that it's not just, although you sell skincare products, that it's not, you're not just promoting skincare products for healthy skin. Oh, uh, it's all related. You know, the, my research, uh, which I mentioned, um, actually brought me to conclusion that uh, what's going on with my skin it has to do with my lifestyle, with the food, what I eat. So, and since I, uh, after I uh, made all these changes to my diet, to uh, my exercises and uh, addressing the emotional even issues, uh, uh, which each of, each of, one ha of us has, <coughs> excuse me, Things actually start changing dramatically. So, because uh, skincare, it's only about five percent. You know how it shows how we look, but about ninety-five percent, it's our lifestyle. So, what so, were some of the things? Because we'll get into the skincare more itself. But I too treated a lot of skincare issues, um, the like the dry, flaky spots, and a lot of it was combination skin. And I learned for me, it was cleansing the liver and definitely eating a lot more of the fresh fruits and vegetables, but definitely my liver, that one of the roles is to process the oils in your body, that if your liver isn't processing oils well, that it was showing up on my skin, I'm only on my face though. Were there certain things that you found that were major culprits that really triggered your skin conditions or ones that you are very common in others? Uh, the trigger for me uh, was actually uh, sugar. So I um, have a, happened to have a sweet tooth. So <laughs> like probably 99% of uh, people around too. So, but since my skin is very sensitive, like super sensitive, I'm probably the best guinea pig on the face of planet when it comes to sensitivity. So that affected my skin and uh, sugar, so um, consumption. And uh, um, the fact that some uh, people are trying to reduce the uh, amount of sugars um, and don't see the results, it's not a discovery for me because I tried everything under the sun not to give up sugar. <laughs> For many, many years, that didn't work at all. So something to keep in mind. So it has, sugar has to be completely eliminated. And by sugar, do you mean just processed sugar? Or for you, was it also like maple syrup and fruits? Or how, what, to what degree did no, that? No, I mean uh, refined sugar, obviously. Yes. You, um, that's nothing wrong with the eating uh berries uh, fruit uh, once in a while um it's uh, full of vitamins and vit minerals and so it's absolutely necessary for nutrition value and uh, but i mean refined sugars so <clears throat> that triggered the uh, acne my my acne so once i gave that up so my skin cle cleaned up you absolutely right about um, liver so uh, and uh, another point is um, quite a bit of people have um, discoloration of the skin so women suffer with the like brown spots on their skin and they are trying to find something to get rid of it and sometimes those spots are called liver spots Mm -hmm. So by detoxifying the liver, so that's the way to do that. Uh, because, yeah, you can, uh, some of the oils work for that, like frankincense oil work uh, uh, to lighten up those spots. But uh, uh, it's a much deeper level than <clears throat> you can see on the surface. 
So obviously, yes, from inside out. So when you want to get glamorous, clean skin, that's the only way to obtain the uh, results you want. Yeah, very true. I can I can tell for myself it's really great motivation to keep a clean diet when you see and feel the results as well. You know, and it's it's like the silver lining. It can seem like a real curse to be very sensitive whether it's to foods or to the environment, but it's really the silver lining that you get to have such a great response then when you make healthy changes. It's great motivation. That's right. Yeah. May I ask, what, were you drinking some tea? It looked really yummy. Yeah, it is uh, tea. It's actually hibiscus tea, so. Yum. It's really, it's just a beautiful color red, too. Uh, yeah, it is. So as far as the choosing the ingredients, then, for your products, um, maybe I could step back a little bit. Uh, was there any cultural influence? First of all, where are you? Where are you originally from? And was there any cultural influence? I think when I first met you, you had mentioned that the, some of the ingredients you use uh, were very commonly used where you're from. Am I remembering correctly? Yes, that is correct. And uh, I probably mentioned uh, um, about sea buckthorn oil, which is commonly used in uh, China and Russia for many, many occasions, not just for the skin, but also for healing uh, internally, even things like ulcers, uh, because it's very beneficial oil. It has over 180 different vitamins, minerals, amino acids. It's uh, just uh, one of the, the incredible oils. Uh, and uh, sometimes people confuse it with the buckthorn, which uh, 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 grow in abundance in Minnesota, <laughs> people's backyards. So it's totally different species, has nothing to do with that. And the sea buckthorn has a beautiful bright orange uh, berries, which are very high in beta carotene, which is beneficial for um, skin and for the body in general. So, and another oil uh, which uh, you probably never heard uh, is tamarind nut oil. Um, it's another one of my favorites uh, ever uh, because it is, it works so wonderful for the skin. It's just so rich and uh, so uh, much full of minerals and uh, vitamins. Um, and it also helps uh, with the symptoms of uh, dermatitis, eczema, uh, or all kinds of issues, skin issues people have. It's very healing oils. Actually, both of them are very healing oils. So I see Bacterin. So they're more uh, like exotic oils. Uh, um, probably for some people, but uh, the fact that um, they are not we very well known doesn't mean they're not very effective. They're extremely uh, beneficial. Rose hip oil, well, a lot of people know rose hip oil, but it's very common in Russia as well, uh, where I am originally from. So, Yeah, there's another great one. It has a lot of vitamin C in it, doesn't it? Yes. Very good for the skin. And mm -hmm. I remember you were talking about the sea buckthorn and it was in your product just as the information was coming out more, becoming more popular online about sea buckthorn and mm -hmm. became kind of a panacea for anti-aging. And you're, you're ahead of the curve on that one. See, um, I don't believe in the a panacea. It's just the media once in a while talked a lot, like choosing, okay, let's talk about argan oil. Oh, this is panacea uh, for everything, for any kind of skin issues. Um, I try, I use uh, argan oil. It's one of my favorite. As a matter of fact, three years ago, my husband and I went to Morocco specifically to establish the uh, contact with suppliers over there and um, um, to receive argan oil and Moroccan uh, wrestle clay, 
as well for my mask. However, I believe in the balance, in the combination of oils, because uh, there are so many wonderful oils and uh, uh, it's impossible to stick all of them just in one blend. Mm -hmm. So to me, rotation of my serums, like I have five best certified organic serums, um, this is the key, rotating. So using some of them in the, uh, let's say in summer, like prodigal sun you mentioned, it's wonderful for summer, a very light earthly elixir, that's another one, another blend which uh, has only non comedogenic oils, very light oils, which are not gonna um, plug your pores and very suitable for uh, even for combination and in a small amounts even for oily skin. So, um, because sometimes there is a, a myth that oily skin doesn't need any, any you know, oils on, doesn't need certain oils, heavy oils, rich oils, yes, but there are very, very light oils uh, which only hydrate your skin. Mm -hmm. Um, without the uh, triggering more sebum oil production on your skin. So, mm -hmm. for example, like argan nut oil, uh, rose hip oil, um, macadamia nut oil, all these oils are very, very light. Apricot kernel oil is another one, another example. So when you um, meet with, I don't know if you do your product displays anymore, um, or if I've seen other people displaying your products for you. You probably are busy doing all the other CEO stuff of, of business. Almost every day. Almost every day. I'm on demos. Just I have uh, 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 much uh, the more um, wholesale uh, accounts, the wholesale places where my products are selling. So I'm traveling all around Twin Cities, uh, doing my pre presentations and uh, trying to actually educate people on uh, women on the, uh, um, choosing the uh, right products for them. I think that's something you mentioned too when we were together. This is my cat, by the way. <laughs> Taking advantage of me sitting down for once. Um, is choosing the right products for your skin type. I remember you emphasizing how important that is. And how does a person even know? Well, yes, it, indeed. This is uh, extremely important uh, to choose uh, the uh, products based on your personal sensitivity, personal skin type. Uh, the best way to uh, find out it, it's um, like, let's say, in the morning before you wash your face, take a quick look at your face. What do you see? If uh, your T-zone looks shiny and all oily and your cheeks are not, that should tell you that you have combination skin. If there are no oily spots at all, and you took a shower, after the shower you feel like kind of tightness of, of the skin, so that should tell you that your skin probably normal to a dry on the drier side. So, but majority of people are combination, have combination skin and um, um, it's a little tricky because it's uh, um, skin which is considered to be not, not balanced. So the first goal would be to balance your skin by suppressing the oil production in your T-zone using the uh, right um, facial wash with no chemicals, no alcohol, no soap ingredients, no detergent ingredients. Um, um, Applying exfoliating, exfoliation, like uh, scrubs and mask, suppressing the oil production in your T-zone a little bit, not too much, but a little bit. So it is very important because if you start applying lotions all over your face and you have combination skin, so your skin automatically will trigger more production of oil. So uh, your 
uh, T-zone will be even more oily, more shiny, especially in summertime. So the, so the first, it sounds like there's, like there's and the first, and the first is, is to seek balance. That is correct. And then, balance, I would say it's a key word for everything, mm -hmm. not just uh, for skin, but for uh, health in general. So everything is about balance, if you think about it. Mm -hmm. Well, balance in your diet. You have some really great tips on your website on how to address acne. And it's really a, a holistic approach, which seems like it would be a great step for someone who's, first of all, seeking that balance, you know, start internally. And also, what can you do on the surface then to find that balance? And then I would assume that you're moving on to more of a, a regular key, uh, upkeep kind of skincare routine that changes with the seasons is I'm, I'm kind of um guess that's what i have done over time is that what you help that, that, mm -hmm. because in the summertime we tend to be a little bit uh, more on the, our skin tend to be uh, more on the oily side um and uh, in um, so that's why i would recommend always uh choose the lighter serums or um, creams, although uh, my preference is always uh, uh, on the serums. I like, uh, I don't like uh, anything which involves emulsifiers or preservatives, nothing like that. Uh, my skin just <laughs> can't tolerate anything but oils, but oils are just perfect. And uh, uh, like prodigal sun, my prodigal sun, I would definitely recommend the uh, as a, a light morning moisturizer for um, summertime. Obviously, facial wash I mentioned it's very important to choose uh, the right one. Um, and uh, applying mask if you have combination skin would be a great idea. Like my Moroccan uh, mask has only uh, two active ingredients. It's just uh, resol clay and uh, uh, from Atlas Mountains in Morocco and organic uh, um, lavender oil mixed with a little distilled water for the consistency. So um, in winter time, obviously, I would suggest uh, uh, a little bit richer oils, uh, like uh, my raw cream seems like my best-selling product in winter time, so which is so cool. I really enjoy that one. Yeah, it's good for it's a body butter as well, so all over your body and uh, um, basically anywhere, elbows, um, cuticles, uh, so anywhere you have uh, dry skin. In my teaching in my book, I talk about body typing, and it goes back on um, teaching more of the basics of Ayurveda or the ancient um, East Indian um, medicine and traditional Chinese medicine concepts of body typing. And uh, I definitely see a lot in there are certain characteristics of people. So um, there's earth, fire, air, and water is how I break them down. And those people would have tendencies to, you know, I can see in their face when I'm doing wellness consultations if they're naturally more of an air person but they have oil on their skin that would not be a natural tendency for that type of person and is an indicator of imbalance in their body but with um, in, in the same respect these body types or these elements show up in different phases of our life and so uh, at least in these traditional medicines there are different ailments or different characteristics that are going to show up at different stages in life. And I've heard that it's the same for skincare, where our skin changes through our life as well. Have you yeah, seen that? So, yeah, I'm familiar with the, those uh, types you mentioned, the uh, Roma Yurveda. Um, yes, uh, when we are aging, uh, skin tend to dry out. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so, but I do see some uh, women of uh, my age and even uh, in their 70s having very oily skin that already tells me about imbalance so 
they go in through. So that's why detoxifying the body, is, uh, I believe it's very important. I do it twice a year, spring and fall. So use a master cleanse. So I believe this is very important procedure to do. Also known as the lemonade cleanse. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, it is known like lemonade cleanse or master cleanse. Mm -hmm. It's a very good one. And then um, in, a, in another other respect, so we're, we live in Minnesota where there's very distinct seasons. So we talked about skincare changes over seasons, but there are some people who live, let's say, in the desert southwest. I would imagine that their skincare might, routine might not change as much as ours would with the seasons because it's so typically dry year-round. Yes, that's right. And I found, you know, having the combination skin um, for so long, especially, I never wanted to put oil on my skin, um, but that definitely did help to balance out. But I also noticed with proper moisturization, my makeup goes on a lot better and right. it helps, helps the makeup to perform. That is correct. Well, uh, you shouldn't be, uh, no one should be afraid of oils. You know, some people are looking, oh, I'm looking for oil free what do you have oil free mm -hmm. nothing you know it just depends what oils you choose so for certain skin types or sensitivity but oils work just wonders i'm just so passionate about essential oils like myrrh oil frankincense oil rose oil my favorites so carotid oil they do wonders for wrinkles some people i noticed the uh, uh, listen to uh, advertisement and everything and said, oh, I use uh, uh, coconut oil for everything. Well, coconut oil is a great oil, so it's, uh, it goes in quite a few of my preparations. But again, if someone has oily skin, that's not the oil for you. Mm -hmm. If you are trying to um, take care of your wrinkles or uh, get rid of fine lines, Coconut oil is not going to do much, you know, for that. Mm -hmm. There are beautiful oils like frankincense, myrrh oil, rose oil, which do much better job for that. What so, would you say, the, the products that you carry, what would you say are the best for treating acne? And which ones are best for anti-aging? <laughs> uh, see, Tara, I don't have, a, a, like, a, um, best it is routine you have to understand mm -hmm. it's not just like one single uh blend which uh, uh, i always use and uh, uh just uh, uh, as i mentioned before it's a routine so you need to wash your face especially in summer at least twice a day hopefully <laughs> uh, people do that so um that's why very important to choose product uh, uh, with the, uh, no alcohol, free of alcohol and free of soap ingredients like mine. Um, it's very important to hydrate with a toner, you know, in summertime. I do it a few times a day. I don't apply all the time serums mm -hmm. because uh, uh, sometimes uh, to hydrate skin is just enough. Uh, sprinkle uh, a little bit of... Uh, um, uh, facial floral toner over your face it's already uh, gives you hydration what is, um, what is what constitutes that toner by the way is it um what's in the toner what's in the toner it's a good question <laughs> thank you for asking um in the toner um, first of all my toners both toners for normal to dry and for normal to oily both uh, of them are uh, certified organic products and uh, they have different ingredients since skin type is different, but normal to dry has uh, flower hydrosols, um, essential oils, and aloe vera gel. It's pretty simple uh, formula, but it does a job. Well, uh, I remember they're very, very light. Very light, yes, it is. And um, for oily skin, just different oils goes in, like eucalyptus oil, cedarwood oil. Uh, essential oils, uh, a little bit of uh, apple cider vinegar, 
and uh, also lavender hydrazole. So when you're talking about using this, do you use this in your skincare routine in the morning, evening, and then like throughout the day, like you would a snack? Is it like a snack? In summertime, drink? yes, especially in summertime. Yes, especially in summertime to hydrate your skin with something very light, you know, without any heavy duty oils. So nothing like that. So during the day, yes, I do that. Well, obviously, uh, uh, I, I, when I don't wear makeup, so not all with the makeup. Yeah, I've used hydrosols even when I'm wearing makeup. Sometimes I feel like it just needs a refresher, you know, like you need a drink of water to, you know, right. refresh your mouth. And then it just feels really good to freshen up like that, too. Yes, it does. So, uh, as I mentioned, uh, for... Um, Summertime, my prodigal sun, earthly elixir for the evening for someone who has combination skin. But uh, all my products, uh, you know, kind of I selected, uh, uh, separated for different skin types on my website. So based on what skin type the person has, uh, the selection you can find, the, uh, which I recommend for certain. Also, the skin routine is on the website, like a short reminder what goes in for the evening one of my favorite is raw cream as well uh in the winter time and summer time it's my virgin pearls it's a different color of the label red color but it's a uh, um because it's my signature line collection and i selected the oils my favorite oils goes in like argonaut oil nut oil jojoba oil I make infusion also. I infuse calendula in uh, uh, organic ex calendula flowers in organic extra virgin um, olive oil. I do it for a month, shaking the bottle every day. Then at the end of the month, I um, strain it and add to this particular preparation. So I guarantee you. No one like mainstream cosmetic is gonna bother with this. It's kind of old way of extracting the um, beneficial properties from the plant material into the oils. It calls infusion, oil infusions. And I would imagine that you're that I, I've looked at a number of your products, and I don't know if any of them have any high concentration of water. Like they're very concentrated. You're getting a really great value. Um, yes. And a little bit uh, about that, about why, when to add water and when not to. Uh, because of that, uh, that my products are very concentrated, uh, you need tiny, tiny little bit, just a, a few drops sometimes. Uh, if you have combination skin, for instance, if you ho have uh, uh, dry skin, or maybe uh, one or two pumps for the whole face, but very little. And all of this it needs to be, they need to be applied over the uh, toner or just damp skin mm. after the, right after the shower, for instance. So, so if your skin already has the water rather than you adding water to the product and diluting yeah, the I don't like selling water really. You know, I figured people can find the, the water in their own places. So so right after the shower, uh, apply it right away, small amounts. Uh, and obviously why you need that water because uh, you need to lock it in because skin needs hydration. And my preparations are very concentrated, concentration of oils. So um, applying a, a toner or your face is very important at this point to lock um, moisture I'm, in. I'm sorry. <laughs> we have a slight delay and I, I get anxious to ask a question and I didn't realize you were still finishing. I'm sorry. Uh, but I noticed on your website, you mentioned a couple of times to filter your shower or bath water with a charcoal filter that the chlorine that so many of us have in our, our tap water uh, is actually harmful to the skin. How does chlorine affect the skin? It's basically drying out, just like alcohol in the majority of skincare. So chlorine, alcohol, those are substances you do not want to touch your face with. 
I never use even soap on my face ever. So, and as I mentioned, my facial wash has no uh, soap ingredients. I believe it's very important, no alcohol, um, besides the fact that it's free of uh, chemicals or artificial fragrances. Basically, all, all bad guys are out and all good guys are in. Only the good guys, only the superheroes <laughs> allowed. So there's a lot of um, essential oils are becoming more and more popular these days. And, um, you know, you see them in more and more products. People are using them um, neat as just oils themselves without mixing them with a carrier. What is the process that you go through in selecting the right oils? Because from what I understand, you have to be very... Um, really careful actually of the sources you get these these Absolutely. potency oils from Absolutely, Tara, you're so right about this uh, You have to know how to mix what proportion what the percentage uh, uh, What oils goes with each, with each other what oils do not and uh, um all my formulas based on aromatherapy knowledge. So basically, then uh, it goes uh, back thousands and thousands of years ago. The knowledge is out there. It's just uh, a matter of uh, uh, reaching to it and uh, applying it to skincare. So I don't think I uh, reinvented the wheel at this point. But I did add it in my preparations uh, 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 certain oils which uh, uh, I selected um, from different parts of the world. So as I mentioned before, so and um, what is uh, very important as well is quality of the oils. Mm -hmm. So quality is the key. I do a lot of research in order to select only higher quality certified organic with all uh, certifications and everything and uh, another important thing is choosing the oils which are um, extracted the right way so the method of extraction is very important my oils are called cold pressed oils with all vitamins minerals in them still because hidden uh, the oils during the process of extraction, which some processes uh, require, it's, it's uh, just uh, not very good for the oils. The vitamins, minerals, they can't uh, uh, survive all this heat. So this is very important to use cold pressed oils. And the uh, essential oils are all um, uh, steam or water distilled. So, because there is also uh, there are o o oils which can be so solvent mm -hmm. extracted. So those are chemicals. So, so you have to know what method of extraction, and sometimes it takes to, uh, a lot to talk to if it's not on the um, not very clear on the. Um, um, suppliers uh, information I have to call them and uh, verify so confirm what kind of oils they use so all these details are very important I believe yeah, just like what we put on our salad like olive oil we are trying to find uh, cold pressed uh, extra virgin organic olive oil the same thing with the oils I use for skincare Absolutely. Um, and I, I'm trying to get on a guest or we're just in the process of making a, a date. Uh, someone who sources in these types of oils for consumer, you know, like for salads and olive oils and balsamics that are, that they source, they bring in so that they're not mixed with canola oil and all that, all that stuff. So I'm curious. Um, so there's a difference between essential oils and what we're calling just oils, like the avocado or ojoba, um, the olive oils. I mean, in, in concept, they're similar because they're the oils from the plants, but they're different in the sense that essential oils 
are much more concentrated and typically used more in a medicinal concentrated way. Like all food is medicine, but there are different degrees of concentration. And so I'm curious as to, like again, there's kind of a panacea of essential oil um, buyer buying going on right now. Um, and there are a lot of, there are some good brands out there. Um, and I'm personally curious as to if you have a line of just purely essential oils that you use for your own personal aromatherapy, if you use them singularly, or if you only use them maybe perhaps in your skincare and you don't use them sing as a single essential oil. That's a really long question. I hope it <laughs> makes sense. Is there uh, any kind of when it comes to essential oils, I basically uh, use only three companies which I trust their quality. Mm -hmm. And uh, those are very little as botanicals, uh, our local uh, um, brand, the EcoCert Organic, uh, Eden Botanicals, the certified organic too, and uh, um, uh, what's the name? Organic Infusions. So they sell, uh, uh, but mostly from organic infusions, I buy uh, nut and seed oils. Mm. So not seed and fruit oils, but uh, essential oils from Eden Botanicals and Veredit as Botanicals. I'll put those in the show notes too for, for others to have access to. That's something I'm personally curious about because there are many um, companies that are out there, yes, many, many, and there are, um, I think very good brands, but then you have to also know where the, the information is coming from. You know, if they're creating their own information, uh, if they're sending out the product for studies, right, it's important to know who is creating the information that you're relying upon to trust. <laughs> right. Well, thanks for sharing that. I kind of felt like I was asking for insider information. <laughs> Didn't know if I would. Not a secret. <laughs> I, love, I love my suppliers. I cherish them. So they're wonderful companies. And uh, because, uh, um, yes, I do, uh, I do believe that oils have to have uh, therapeutic properties to carry. So that's uh, uh, the quality oils uh, will give me quality products. Mm -hmm. so there is no way around. That's the only way how to create a quality product with the, using just the ingredients which are higher quality. That's, I believe, is the right way. So I have two two kind of side by side questions. So, what do you think are signs of healthy skin? And um, well, I'll ask that one first. I'll save the next one. Well, healthy, glowing skin with, with the, you know, no, uh, no blemishes, clean skin. So uh, it's, uh, I would say that would be <laughs> um, a sign of a healthy skin. Isn't it interesting? I find, I feel that we're, as a, as a human race, we're very attracted to what are signs of health, you know, so a certain physique. You know, whether it's, and we all, again, going back to my body typing studies, we all have preferences. You know, we seek to, we seek balance. So a smaller person might be attracted to a bigger person, but in general, we look for uh, a healthy physique that is, that is not too fat, not too thin, for example, or shining hair, uh, thicker hair, bright eyes, glowing skin, that they're all signs of health. And we are attracted to, to that in, in a person. I find fascinating. Yes, yeah, I agree with you, Tara. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, uh, the uh, beautiful skin uh, comes from inside. So adjusting the um, diet, the lifestyle, so that's very important. And uh, kind of put it together on my website under uh, beauty tips, 10 beauty tips, uh, what adjustments I, I have done a few years ago to do. Uh, be where I am now, and uh, it definitely works. <laughs> so I can tell. So even adjusting uh, with the physical exercises, uh, adjusting 
uh, hormones, balancing the hormones is uh, very important. So that will might affect significantly. Absolutely, and you don't have to take a bunch of pills to do it. Sometimes it's just drinking enough water, getting the right fresh food, and like you said, exercise doesn't even have to be intense. Sometimes yeah. the smallest changes make the biggest difference. I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. But uh, it's uh, actually a lot of things involved, uh, uh, I believe, uh, in the... Uh, um, walking barefoot, uh, uh, detoxifying the body. Um, this is, uh, that means a lot. Some uh, women have uh, like uh, um, bags under the eyes. That could be uh, a sign of, uh, I always recommend it to check out the uh, water retention. Sometimes the body retain the water and it affects uh, the eyes. So skincare can't do much about it you know it's internal problem so in the most cases it always any skin issues it's internal problem just listening to your body is very important and watching it and uh, trying to find natural cure for these or that issue you obtain you know when we're aging <laughs> all kinds of things coming up but uh, then it's not panicking but seeking for answers mm -hmm. or holistic answers and they're out there there are tons of information tons of information it's just seeking for it and you'll definitely find it well I think um, on your website the 10 tips it could seem overly simple but I, in, on this podcast especially, I strive to keep it simple because like you said, there's so much information out there, but it can be overwhelming. You know, a person could wonder, where do I start? And I would absolutely recommend your tips for, for one uh, because those are the basics that will help you to balance out more and kind of start with a clean slate. You know, then there's stuff that you can get into, like you're talking about the, the bags under the eyes you know, that can be resolved even if you're drinking enough clean water. It's amazing when you give the body enough clean water what it can take care of itself. It's really fascinating. Yes, it is, indeed. And maybe this is a topic for another podcast, but there are different, people may be familiar with reflexology and the different organs that are represented in different parts of your hands, but there's actually a study of the different portions of your face and which organs they relate to and like you were talking about under the eyes, I'm sure you're relating to them relating to the kidney function in the body and your kidneys regulate water in your body. And mm -hmm. so with someone experienced like Victoria, you can see the face. And so she's looking at a bigger picture um, and which I think is, is really um, great to have in someone who's creating a natural line like this, that you look beyond just the surface of the skin is imperative. You had sent some information as far as um, the ranking of your products and how pure they are. And there's a website that you had mentioned and they also have an app and your products are extremely highly rated on this website. Would you share what website that is and maybe even um, a few things that make your products stand apart? on that ranking system? Yes, uh, absolutely. Um, it is uh, EWG, uh, which stands for Environmental Working Group. Um, they created Safe Cosmetic Database, which has uh, over 130,000 different products, cosmetic products. And uh, you can type uh, uh, whatever you're using right now and see how this independent uh, group um, rated uh, for safety that um, of this product. It's quite interesting um, company. They've been around about 10 years and uh, they have app now. You can just uh, upload your, uh, from your apps, app store on your iPhone. It calls Healthy Living. And uh, 
voila, right uh, under your fingertips, you'll get all information on ingredients which goes in your products. Mm -hmm. You know, then, uh, because it might be very frustrating for women to um, come into the store and look at the shelves, thousands, thousands of, you know, skincare products, which one to choose? Mm -hmm. Not uh, only which one is right for my skin, but which one is safe to use. Yeah, there are two things. So, and uh, I remember I've been in that shoe also. It was so even stressful. It's just like, which one I choose? And I stand in there reading. Everyone is trying to say uh, in description that uh, their cream is uh, the best and uh, just uh, buy it because it's, it has this and that. But many of them forget to mention how safe it is. And for us, this should be priority, number one, safety. Because there are so many products, skincare products, which affect uh, hormonal balance, women's hormonal balance. And uh, um, this is dangerous, things we are talking about. So, uh, and even the... Um, sunblocks, mainstream uh, sunscreens, they're just packed with chemicals, which uh, I believe do much more harm than good. So, uh, yeah, that app is uh, uh, just uh, so helpful. Again, the name of the app is Healthy Living. So just find it and upload it on your um, I'll make sure there are links to oh. when I post this podcast, I'll make sure that there are links to the, the resources that you mentioned that as well. While I have you on that topic, I'm going to insert a quick question, if I may. And what is your perspective on sun and sun exposure? Well, I'm a big sun advocate. <laughs> might sound unusual, for, <laughs> but I do love sun, and I believe that sun is life. So we need that vitamin D. We do need, we all need desperately. And uh, um, I'm not as afraid of sun uh, as uh, uh, a lot of women are. Um, however, I believe that uh, we have to treat sun wisely. Mm. So what do I mean by that? So um, between 11 approximately and 4 o'clock, I try to just cover my the whole body, you know, with the uh, light white uh, clothes, um, like shirts, uh, um, shorts and the uh, uh, wide rim uh, um, hats, hat and uh, um, glasses, just cover myself. Uh, uh, but before 11 and after 4 o'clock, I, I tend to wear as little as possible in my body and get every single sun uh, ray I can find, uh, no matter uh, where I am, even if I'm Caribbean, still, you know, I'm trying to be always in the sun. So, so again, what are those time frames that you avoid a direct exposure? A direct exposure uh, between 11 approximately, especially if you are close to uh, equator, uh, like in tropical places, and uh, uh, before 4 o'clock. Mm -hmm. so this time frame I try to, well, not like I'm trying to avoid it. Uh, uh, I'm still in the sun. But uh, I apply uh, my serum, Prodigal Sun, I mentioned, which uh, I selected uh, in this particular product. Uh, the oils have been known for centuries as a, a protected human skin from harmful UV rays. Mm -hmm. It's not any oil, but certain oils, like Tamanu, not oil, I already mentioned that. Uh, sesame seed oil, coconut oil, carrot seed oil, sea buckthorn oil. So a couple of oils will help to, um, if you got too much sun, to calm down your skin and redness if you got any. Like uh, I added also chamomile and lavender to this particular preparation. So 
and I call it before and after sun product. Don't call it sunblock or sunscreen because it's not, but as a before and after sun product, it's perfect. That's the only one I use when I travel, and we love, my husband and I love traveling, uh, um, uh, spending uh, winters in the Caribbean for at least a couple of months every winter. Uh, that's uh, the only one I use. I never got uh, sunburn, so never. So you so, don't use sunscreen, I'm guessing. That's the only one I use. Yeah. And uh, I don't have any brown spots. So a wonderful testimonial. <laughs> I do love Prodigal Sun too. It's it's very it's light and like you said, I said the the scent for me is really wonderful too. It's very light. I mean, when I mention scent, I'm very sensitive to, especially artificial scents. Of course, it's not artificial at all. But even sometimes natural scents and natural, I'm putting, I mean, doing air quotes here, natural products can be overwhelming. And I have found yours to be very, very um, nice and soft. By the way, it's interesting enough that a prodigal sun, uh, not only uh, women love this prodigal sun serum, but uh, men too, is uh, their moisturizer. That's what I discovered. Quite a few men uh, buy my prodigal sun serum as well. Nice. Like as an aftershave kind of uh, moisturizer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think once, it, you know, a good product is a good product. You know, it doesn't matter if, if it's marketed for men or women, it's, it's good. Well, uh, it's not, not that much about marketing. Uh, it's uh, more about the feeling afterwards and the smell, like you mentioned. So, <laughs> so it's not overwhelming for men, mm -hmm. I, I guess. So my, uh, I have a few more questions. We're wrapping up here. Um, and you would be able to better identify what is it that really sets your products apart that makes them rank so highly on the EWG website? What, what really is it that sets them apart? Well, the fact that the purity, the purity and the, uh, um, I don't use any uh, synthetic chemicals uh, or artificial fragrances uh, because once you uh, use it, uh, the uh, it, it will show on safety rating. It will affect the safety rating immediately. So the purity, and that's uh, what I I would say. What that's what make them uh, safe. I believe but again you know some uh, uh, people are allergic to even some essential oils even if it's natural uh, it, it's not very common but I figured some people ask me what do you have with no lavender so I am allergic to lavender I would never think in a million years that someone could be allergic to lavender mm -hmm. or carrot seed oil or lemongrass but some people are so it's good. That reminds me of another, another thing that I really like on your website is that you list, you have a link for a page that lists oils that are not recommended during pregnancy. And I, I've even asked practitioners and I can't find uh, very much information on this. I know that there are oils. Um, so I think that's, that's a great resource too. I think that's really wise that you put that on there because I think it's easy to think as a woman that, oh, it's natural, I can put it on my body everywhere. But the truth is if you're, you're pregnant or if you're trying to become pregnant, that there are oils that affect different, um, and especially the endocrine system of your body. And Absolutely. that's important to know. Absolutely, that's right. And it, it came from my customer who asked me, so what oils, and they did a lot of research so as I said, you know, the knowledge uh, about essential oils is out there. It's just a matter of uh, digging and finding and taking your time, finding and helping people, so, which I'm trying to do. Well, thank you for including that. I think that's a great resource. And um, two questions that I um, ask all guests, and I think we already covered a few of them. So if you want to repeat or add to new information, you're welcome to do either. But what are some, what are just two tips that you have for people for their skincare, their wellness care? 
Um, one of them has to be free, but something that they can do very easily right now to improve their health. So um, the first one comes into my mind would be uh, completely eliminate sugars from your diet completely, totally refine sugars. I, no cheating. Um, me. like some people can't cheat. They have to be well, totally pure. <laughs> Yes, yes, because that's going to affect uh, in a real bad way. Um, using uh, certified organic uh, uh, products is very important to skin when it comes to skin care. I believe that uh, as a healthy diet, I would recommend to stick to um, about the 80-20 ratio, like 80% uh, raw and 20 could be uh, some uh, um, um, like steamed or baked stuff, but mostly it's uh, vegetables, uh, fruit. Um, I prefer in the uh, form of uh, smoothies, like berry, uh, uh, fruit smoothies, uh, green smoothies, uh, this type of things. Definitely, that would help a lot to change uh, the health. Uh, health um, detoxify the body. So that's well, it's not an <laughs> easy one, like you mentioned, but I believe it is important. And drinking water as well. So plenty of water during the day. That's probably the, one of the easiest. Is yes, just... I would say so. But not not for some people. Some people don't like water. They can't force themselves to drink it. Or they, mm -hmm. or they have to force themselves to drink it. And uh, uh, the simple solution for it, uh, add a couple of drops of uh, 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 organic um, um, lemon essential oil. Oh, that's uh, I um, sometimes do that. Sometimes... Uh, um, um, add to my uh, water container uh, leaves like in summertime, uh, fresh leaves of uh, uh, spearmint. Mm -hmm. So a bunch of spearmint, which is in my garden. So I just uh, cut it and uh, put it in. It's, it, it, is, uh, it has that uh, nice flavor, the water, just in a water container, big water container. I have glass container at home. So... Yeah, very simple. It's naturally refreshing too, naturally cooling to the body. And since we were talking about liver earlier, spearmint has the signature, the spiky leaves of uh, being a liver detoxifier, the lemon as well. And so you're yeah. it's so amazing what's actually helpful for us internally that will show up externally. You know, it's like we're, we're meant to be like this with nature. I'm interweaving my hands, you know, it's all meant to go together, it seems. Right. I, I, uh, I believe and uh, I do uh, eat like half of lemon every day with my tea. So fresh uh, uh, with the skin actually on it. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, I got used to. I add uh, just a tiny bit of uh, maple syrup occasionally to it because it's pretty sour. Or um, uh, um, uh, raw honey. So not to be a sour <laughs> taste. So, but I believe lemon is an excellent uh, detox. Well, obviously you've you've proven you've given the proof in your yourself, your lovely face. Well, thank you. Great evidence. Thank you, Dara. Thanks. Well, I appreciate you joining me, um, especially working with me on the technology side to get this up and going. Um, I'm really happy that uh, you were able to join me and to share some of this really valuable knowledge because it's not, like you said, just about skincare. It is important what you put on your skin, but I appreciate that you are available as someone, as an expert to share um, the, the, deeper, the deeper aspects of skincare and wellness as well. Um, where do people find your products? Uh, my products are now in the uh, tel, 10 uh, health food stores and uh, three, three whole foods. Uh, whole foods are in uh, Minnetonka, Maple Grove, and at Hennepin Avenue. And uh, 
health food stores basically all around Minnesota. So Lake Vince, Valley Natural, Crossroads, Seward, so the stores. And we can also find you online and it's because it's yeah. which will yeah. I'll, I'll post online. the link for. And um, I have to say too, for such a high quality product, you um, they are priced very, very well. Very well. Um, for the yeah, I want to, uh, them to be affordable for people because I believe oils, uh, you know, has to be for everyone. It's a God's gift for us, as far as I'm concerned. Well, thank you for that. And I wish you the best. And I hope business continues to go well and that uh, you, your products get in all over the country, too, because uh, I'm sure other people will be interested, not just us here in Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Tara. Thank you so much for inviting me. We'll be in touch. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, you too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.